Section 3.6 Quantitative Information from Balanced Equations A balanced equation is a very powerful uh, communication. It's telling you how many molecules of each uh, reactant that you have and how many molecules of each product you have. By, by having exactly the ratio of every, re every reactant to each other and every reactant to every product, and every product to each other, whatever you're given, you could figure that out in terms of numbers, say moles. And then once you have moles, you have a relationship between everything on either side. So for instance, take a look here. If I know that it's a two hydrogen to one oxygen to two water molecule or two to one to two relationship, and I know there's two molecules of hydrogen to one molecule of oxygen to two molecules of water, I don't just know how much I'm starting with and what I get, but any of these moles could go through the periodic table and figure out an amount. So two moles of hydrogen, for instance, is an amount of four grams. It weighs four grams. One mole of oxygen is 32 grams. Two moles of water is 36 grams. So if I'm given a certain amount of a reactant, for instance, I could find out how much of the product is actually being made. Extremely useful. So you're looking at the balanced equation not just in terms of molecules, but in terms of moles. It's a two mole to one mole to two mole relationship. And then once I have moles, I can go through the molar mass that I, that I add up on the periodic table, and from there, I'm able to get grams if I have grams. If I, you're given grams, you have to find moles first, and then go once you have moles, you can go through the balanced equation and get moles of whatever else you're looking for, and then go back to the periodic table, use the molar mass to get grams. So it's going to be grams, the grams of a substance, you go through the periodic table. This is the molar mass, the periodic table. Once I have moles, then I go through the balanced equation. The balanced equation is moles of one thing to moles of another. Once I have the moles of the what I'm looking for, I go back through the periodic table, and then I find the, use the molar mass to find grams. So that means that this is the periodic table And so is this. This is the periodic table. This is the balanced equation. So gram substance of A through the periodic table divided by the molar mass, moles of A. Relationship um, through the balanced equation to find moles of whatever else you're looking for, then back through the periodic table to find grams. So here's an example. I've got sugar plus Oxygen yields carbon dioxide plus water. That's called respiration. So when you, every cell in your body does this. You need oxygen. That's why you would die without oxygen. You need sugar because every cell eats sugar. No matter what you have for breakfast, every cell is eating sugar all the time. So if you eat steak, your body turns it into sugar. If you eat sugar, it's really easy and that's why you get fat. So it doesn't matter. Oxygen plus sugar yields, the only thing that your cells spit out is carbon dioxide that you breathe out plus water, water, and you get rid of that too, okay? So they're going to say you have 1.00 1, 1 grams of sugar. You're going to calculate the moles of sugar and then turn, turn it to moles of water to grams. So I'm going, this is what I would do for myself. I would say I'm going in with grams, I need to go to moles, and then once I'm in moles, I'm doing a one to six relationship. And then I'm gonna find moles of water, and then go from moles of water to grams of water. Okay, so that's, that's how we're gonna do it. Grams goes to moles of sugar, and then it's a one to six relationship. I find moles of water, then go through the per periodic table back to find grams of water. 
All right, so let's see what we can do. I need to know how much that water, uh, how much sugar weighs. So here is the molar mass of sugar. I took six times 12.0107, that's from the periodic table, got 72.0642. I took 12 times 1.00794. I took six times 15.994 added them all up and I got 180.12348 grams per mole. So that is the molar mass of sugar. So I need to know if I've got one gram of sugar, how many moles of sugar that's going to be. So if I have one gram of sugar and for and I have 180 Point one two three four eight grams for every mole. Then I have point zero zero five 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 one seven four seven moles of sugar. So if I have one gram up here. And that's going to equal 0 0.0055, because that's what I found that there were moles. Then I've got number. And I can say 1 is to 6 as 0 0.0055 is 2. All right, so I'm going, to make a, I'm going to make a ratio. And a ratio is the easiest thing that you can do. You do it in grade school. So I can say that 1 mole of sucrose is to six mole uh, of water as, okay, I've got sucrose on top, water on the bottom, I'm going to do it again, 0 0.00555147 moles of sucrose to X moles of water. So now I've got a ratio, I've got a, a cross multiply thing. I can say that one, one times X equals six times 0 .000. So that's going to be six times 0 .00555 divided by one, and I'm going to get X equals 0 0.0333104822 moles of water. And that is what you're going to have right here, 0 0.0333. All right, I'm almost done. I've got moles of water. Now I have to go back through the, through the periodic table to find grams of water. Well, let's do that. Let's do that over here. We've got 2 times 1.00794 plus 1 times 15.9994 added together is 18.01528 grams per mole. So that is the relationship that I'm going to go from what I have here. So if I have... I have 0 0.0333104822 moles. And in one mole, I'm going to have 18.01528 grams. Moles are going to cancel. So I'm going to multiply the 0 0.0333. And I get 0 0.600097 grams. So my answer is 0.6 grams. So you're going to go from grams through the periodic table to moles. Then do a relationship, a just a ratio, 1 to 6. And then 1 mole is to 6 moles as whatever moles you found out before is to x, 
then solve for x, and that'll be your moles of your new stuff, then go back through the periodic table with your new formula and find grams. And that's it, it's complicated. It's a five or six step process, but it's going to be so common to you because we have to do it so many times. Um, but it's something to practice.